The low code is slash no code game just reached a new level with the latest Flutter Flow update, but not because of the AI gimmicks. The real deal is something else. If you were anything like me, you were practically jumping out of your seat. Hmm when Flutterflow announced this massive update. For years, we all said no code, low code is too limiting and they're not for serious apps. But that might be changing. In this video, I'm going to share the most important updates and share my thoughts about it. Let's start with the best one, the VS Code extension. I have to say, I did not see this one coming. This means you can simply connect your project on VS Code to your project on Flutterflow and sync the custom code files by just click off a button. This makes developing custom code so much faster and easier because no matter how hard they try, Flutterflow's custom code editor kind of sucks. So here is how my workflow looked like before this update. First, create a new repository on GitHub. Connect this repo on Flutterflow. Push the code, pull the code, make my changes, copy everything, paste it into the custom code editor on Flutterflow. Forget to actually copy everything changed on other custom code files. The app breaks. Tell others it's working on my machine. Repeat this process to fix it, but not anymore. Next one is the start of the show. Flutterflow 5.0 will have development environments. In the development world, having two or more environments for a production app is a must. And when Flutterflow didn't have that, it was a real deal breaker for anyone who had a bunch of real users. I had to do so many dumb workarounds to duplicate the same project and connect it to a different database, sync the latest project changes and do it all over again. If you've ever had to test an app with live data or create a new feature in it, risking it all with real users watching, this bomb is armed. You know the stress, but not anymore. Now, we finally have a reasonable way to create test accounts, test data, and experiment without the fear of breaking the production app for everyone. Next, we have branching. Oh boy, was this needed. I mean, we had it, but it never works properly. We know that branching really isn't where it needs to be in terms of the overall user experience with Flutterflow. With proper branching in play, it's going to revolutionize how teams can scale their apps with Flutterflow. Imagine this, multiple developers working simultaneously without stepping on each other's toe. I know, mind-blowing. On the other side, without branching, you know how bad it can get. For example, you are working on one big feature, so the project is unbuildable with 64 new errors, blocking any kind of quick fixes, or if something breaks, you don't know who and what is responsible for that, but not anymore. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, AI. I'm super excited about it, and you should be too. I mean, you can literally draw something and Flutterflow turns it into Flutter code. And you know, I love drawing on my iPad, but I'm keeping my expectations in check. The Copilot clone in Flutterflow is helpful for specific tasks, like automating choice chips. Hmm. Imagine turning a 50 minute task into a 20 second breeze, but for more complex scenarios, it might end up Watch this. Today. being more hassle than it's worth, spending more time debugging AI generated code or I don't know, code blocks or even mouse movements. So we will probably end up wasting time instead of saving. These AI features, they're cool, but not essentials like the other ones that we just talked about. Now that you've seen the update, I mean, the important bits of the update, what do you think? Drop your thoughts below, and if you're still curious, here are some other videos breaking down Flutterflow's best features. See you in the next one.